Hi, in today's video we're gonna talk about the four animals in objective personality. Now, first of all, what are the animals? Well, you could say that they are representative of our animalistic instincts or our animal needs, our human needs, so, you know, because even if we are very evolved today, we are still people that need a lot of different things that animals also need. So yeah, that's the four animals for you. Now let's get started. What are the four animals? The four animals are play, consume, blast, and sleep. What does that mean? Play, consume, blast, and sleep. First of all, it doesn't mean what you think it means. Objective personality describes the four animals as follows. First of all, blast is about the process of quickly skimming information and then going out and doing a lot of stuff with that information. Consume is carefully researching or studying or gathering a lot of stuff and then slowly taking your time to make a decision or to take action based on that information. Sleep means to take time for yourself slowly and methodically going over different options and carefully taking your time to make a decision based on these things. Play means to quickly look at and take in a varied variety of information and to quickly then, besides that, make decisions on said information together with other people. Stay tuned for the next video on objective personality by clicking subscribe down below. Now, first of all, objective personality will be quick to tell you that that's not the whole truth. Oh, you can't discover a blast just by looking at whether somebody is really fast to get going. Or you can't say that somebody is a perceiving type just because they are constantly reading stuff but never getting anywhere. You can't do those things. That's not going to work. You're not going to be able to spot a sleep type based on the fact that they don't talk much or just based on the fact that uh, they are often like contemplative or analytical. Like That's not going to help you. So first of all, you want to study the correlations and connections that these concepts offer. As you might have noticed, there's already some connections here. Consume best describes and connects to the Myers-Briggs trait of perceiving. Blast best connects to the Myers-Briggs concept of judging. Sleep best matches the true sense of introversion. And consume basically matches, play basically matches and play, finally, play basically matches our most stereotypical version of Myers-Briggs extroversion. Now, why are these traits so difficult? Why is it so hard to understand animals? Why are the animals so hard to spot and recognize? Objective personality will be quick to tell you that uh, you're not going to be able to see these concepts very easily. And even if you take all their classes and study all their content for a really long time, it might still be very difficult for you to apply these concepts to type people effectively and accurately. Why is it so hard then? Well, because every animal has to be understood by its relationship to other animals. You can't study or simply look at one thing a person does. You have to understand their full context of their behavior. You'll have to understand that consume types can learn the ability to blast information. Similarly, blast types can develop the persistence and perseverance to take time to study a concept for a longer time before they think they're no dolls and they, before they go uh, full Dunning-Kruger and like uh, tell everyone about it and uh, act like they're total masters even if they don't have any clue what they're talking about, you know. These uh, concepts cannot be taken stereotypically and should not be taken stereotypically. If you choose to go that route, you're gonna get lost very quickly. So, in what way could consume blast? And in what way could consume look like sleep? Or in what way could consume look like play? 
The way I see it, consume types are people that in a state of flow, once again, we're going back to the state of flow, we're going back to the positive state, we're going back to what people do when they're at their best. Consume types at their best are gathering new information. That's what they do. They gather new information. That's what they enjoy the most. Consume types then, and this takes a little bit more effort for them, go inside and then they process and then they think about it and they wonder like, is this right or wrong? Perceiving is, and this is important to remember, not the blind consumption of information, but it is uh, the long, slow process of evaluating a large data set. So if you are studying and working from a large data set, if you have a lot of statistics and a lot of numbers to keep track of, consume is the type that spends the most of the time uh, gathering and generating a large data set and then reflecting on and thinking about it. So sometimes consume might look like sleep because consume has and generates a lot of information and that information has to be processed and filtered. They have to explain how all of those different data points align. They have to make a pattern based on this. They have to say, okay, what does it all mean? That means they have to sleep and process and reflect on concepts. Consume can go into sleep or consume can go into play. As a consume type, you might choose either to go into one of these two processes. That means you might either choose to go into full-on introvert mode, just wondering what the point of everything you're learning is and why you're doing it. And yeah, you might just feel lost in that process. And you start isolating yourself from other people and you start becoming quiet. And people are wondering, like, you are so bubbly, like you're, you're usually so fun, but suddenly you're so serious. Um, Another approach is to go into play. And when you go into play as a consume type, what you do is you start discussing it and throwing it on people. So I learned this new thing. What do you guys think about it? Oh, that cutting looks fun. Let me try that. When you go into play, you're taking all those concepts that you gather and you're throwing it at other people to generate a quick data or decision about whether it's good or bad. Play types, they go based on quick information gathering and quick decision ma making. So it's basically the opposite of sleep. You're gathering a lot of concepts just intuitively or instinctively picking up whatever is around you and you're immediately sharing and putting it out there together with other people. And you're having a back and forth interactive exchange with your environment. That means your environment is collaborating with you and they're bouncing back with you and you are bouncing back with your environment. So whatever happens to be Whatever happens to be around will be used and will be involved in the process. It's a collaborative form of brainstorming. Consume might even go into blast. And what's that look like? Well, what happens when consume goes into blast is it's taken a long time. It's gathered a lot of concept. It has like this whole library of books and data points and data sets. And it's all been arranged really well. It's all been connected. It's all been aligned. It's all been studied. It's started to generate a huge grasp on things. And then somebody comes and asks, hey, do you happen to know anything about squirrels? And Consume goes, oh boy, do I know a lot about squirrels. Let me tell you. And that's when you can see that, yeah, Consume types can and are highly effective at blasting information within areas where they have already done a large amount of study and when they have gathered a large amount of concepts. So consume types in these areas, they've already made their decisions, they've already plotted out their data points, they've already gathered their information, so they're good to go. You can see the consume looking like blast in all those situations. So if you ask somebody with consume to talk about something they're passionate about and where they've done a lot of study, they'll act very confident and they'll be pretty good at talking about it. But if you start throwing in new data points and if you start giving them new angles and if you start uh, challenging or bringing up missing information, 
they're gonna retreat. You're gonna notice this. They're gonna retreat and they're gonna go back inside because perceiving needs to be able to explain everything. And there's new data sets. And oh, I haven't looked at these things and I haven't understood them. And when that happens, that's when they start going more inside again and they start becoming more quiet. So the more information that is new and original, the more likely the consumer is going to go inside and the more novel, uh, knowledgeable or the more consistent information is or the more secure they are in an environment, the more likely that they're going to go into a state of judging or blasting or organizing that information because it's already done. Similarly, let's talk about blast. Blast types or generally speaking judging types tend to be people that they're very quick at uh, making decisions. That's the general difference here. They make decisions quickly where consume makes decisions slowly. So if you are making a new decision about something you have not been confronted with before, as a blast type, it's pretty easy because you've already got a map um, and you can usually just, based on that, make and draw connections and say, okay, that's, this is good or this is bad. When um, you're a judging type or a blast type, what's going to happen typically is you're going to uh, spend a lot of time taking on and processing information. So when people are introducing you to new information, your typical response is going to be no, I don't know. <laughs> you're going to decide that no, this is not something I need and you're going to block it out. Or you're going to take a long time to sit on that concept and you're going to know that that information is there and it's going to go into the back of your head in that information pipeline. You know, uh, blast types, they have a very small and tight information pipeline. Usually it's like, yeah, uh, in a year or so, I'll start looking into reading up on that or doing that, you know, because I've already got this other thing that I'm planning on or thinking about or processing that's uh, been in my head for a really long time. And that's the general state of BLAST. BLAST is slow at information processing and information gathering, but quick at decision making and executive decisions. <laughs> and that's why it's so confusing because yeah, here you've got this idea that blast types, they're quick to get going and quick to get started. That's what David Shannon has been telling you, right? So, but no, that's not the whole picture. The reason why they look like they're so fast-paced is because they're fast-paced at decision-making, but they're not fast-paced at information gathering. If you put a blast type and a consume type in the same room and give them 10 books, uh, well, the, to read and to uh, make a presentation on, well, the consume type is going to read more, but it's going to struggle to make that presentation. And the blast type is going to read less, but it's going to take more time and make a better presentation of that. Those very little pages they, re they read. And that's also something that they do. They skim things. They focus on areas where they're comfortable or where they already feel familiar. They'll open up or skip to the page where they already know stuff. And then they're going to take that page and then they're going to make a whole presentation and make a lot of decisions based on that information. And that's blast for you. Play. Let's talk about play. Play is uh, that interactive state of throwing out decisions. Let me introduce a new concept to you here because so many people are getting tied up on the question of extroversion and introversion or in this case play and sleep. If you are an extroverted type and most people are not pure extroverted types, you know, that kind of a person does not really exist in the full sense of the word. Everyone is introverted a little bit and everyone is extroverted a little bit, you know. Uh, when you're trying to determine the two, what you're looking for is typically boundaries, energy boundaries. More specifically, extroverted types, they tend to be people that have very, very weak boundaries when it comes to energy. That means they are more about the process of expanding energy and doing something or executing or interacting or putting energy to practice. Similarly, introverts or opposingly, introverts tend to be people that are focused on the preservation of energy. And that means the slow build of energy, the preservation of themselves or their energy or their needs. So introverted types, they tend to be people that spend a lot of time, you know, uh, 
building up to something, they spend a lot of time thinking about something, and they spend a lot of time uh, reading about things, or processing things, or doing deep study on things, and uh, yeah, that's interesting. Extroverts, they tend to be pretty fast paced. They make risks more easily. They are quicker to get started on things. They are more interactive. They will burn through a lot of energy very quickly. And what will happen if you burn through energy very quickly? Well, you'll reach a peak faster and you'll crash faster. So the general thing I notice with play types or um, very extroverted types is they tend to be super, super extroverted and then super, super introverted. They're typically the best of both worlds. Yeah, and most extroverts, they'll tell you this. No, I'm actually very introverted, you know, like because once in a week I will crash and I'll just be so exhausted and I'll just be completely dead. <laughs> and that's the general state of play is that state of burning through information very quickly, making a lot of decisions and doing a lot of stuff and reading a lot of things and discussing with a lot of people and then getting super exhausted and then being like, oh my god, I hate people, I need, I need to get out of here. All these decisions, all these people needing things from me, no, I don't want that. Get it out of my way, you know. So play types, uh, their process, whether it's very information heavy or whether it's very decision making heavy or executive, uh, that can be both. It doesn't have to be one uh, or both, it can be one or two. Uh, so what tends to be the case here is uh, they'll say that they are very introverted because they crash and because uh, that process is extremely energy intensive and they'll need to recharge energy a lot uh, in order to manage all of the things that are happening. And a lot of time, you know, when you're playing, it's super fun and you're super optimistic, but you're also like kind of like, uh, faking it a little bit. Extroverted types and play types, they're going to laugh away your jokes and uh, remarks and criticism and they'll be like, oh, that's no big deal. Oh, the car crashed. Ha ha ha. Happens, you know, it happens to the best of us, you know. Uh, and then uh, it, they will get home and they'll be like, and because that energy, you know, like that's, that burns, that uh, those things, that those uh, remarks, those criticisms, uh, all those things that still stinks, even if you can laugh about it and have fun with it and make decisions on it and manage it and put on a strong face to the public, you're still gonna feel like shit when you get home. Like it's still gonna weigh on you, it's still gonna be happy, you know, and that's uh, the thing you're gonna have to realize. Play types, they're not gonna relate to being described as sparkly bunnies of joy and optimism because they're gonna feel like you're stereotyping them. They're gonna feel like you're putting a label on them. Yeah, sure, that's how I can appear, but that's not how I feel. So that's the thing with play. Sleep. I was talking about sleep just before we switched topics. Sleep is interesting. Why is it interesting? Because when sleep has developed a lot of energy or when sleep has uh, studied something for a long time, as can happen if they are a little bit of consume or a little bit of blast, you'll find that they have either developed like a huge library of information or they've developed a huge set of core values that are basically burnt into their core. It can be that the sleep type feels something so strongly because they've been thinking about it for such a long time that they can become super, super extroverted. How does that work? Eric, what are you talking about? I'm sleep and I, I'm not that at all. I, I just spend time alone all the time. I don't like going with people. Uh, what tends to happen with sleep when sleep has spent a lot of time building up their batteries and taking time to themselves and they're introspecting or checking their reasons or working through themselves is they start developing a core value system or a core system of reasons or arguments or information that is super important to them. And then... They notice that people around them, they're, they're messing things up, you know, they're, there's climate change, the world is gonna end, you know, people are uh, eating meat and I'm a vegetarian and that's terrible, you know, like <laughs> the sleep types, they might go into something and they'll become experts in it or they'll become super, uh, they'll, they'll develop super strong values about it and those values push them to the surface, that's like, uh, it's like, I want to bring the analogy of 
nuclear fission. <laughs> it's like uh, so much energy has canalized in this type uh, from that all that time they've sent, sit, spent sitting and thinking and all that energy is like burning through their bones like they it's like filling them up and it's like making them shake of energy like it can develop like it can become like this huge nervous energy because they they're so attached and so attuned to their core that they just have to go out and do something with it and uh, it cannot it doesn't have to necessarily be in the sense of pushing out values or stopping climate change or something like that but it can also be just having an idea that you've thought about for a really long time or a project or something you've been wanting to work on or a tradition or a system that you care about very much or a game that you're super passionate about and because of that you just need to go out and talk to people about it you need to connect with people you need to uh, meet people you need to uh, share or connect with those things and that's also how you can tell the difference between sleep and play because as soon as uh, you start uh, talking to the sleep type about things outside their value system or outside their general ideas or as long as it's not relevant anymore sleep types they become kind of lame <laughs> when you talk to a sleep type and they're not interested at all in what you're saying you're gonna get the very deadpan stare, very low energy vibe, and they're gonna be drifting off and they're gonna be in their own world and you're not gonna exist anymore to them. <laughs> and that's typically the case with sleep types. So uh, when a sleep type is interested in something or values something and is uh, working for that, they can be super extroverted. But if it's outside their values, it's, they're gonna be super <laughs> introverted. They're gonna appear reserved and cold. And uh, so, once again, you cannot track the animals by simply looking at stereotypical things like are they reserved or cold or are they outgoing or passionate. Uh, you're going to have to look at and understand the context and relationships between all these animals. Because like I said, consume can look like sleep if it's absorbed a lot of information and needs to take time to process those things. Or it can look like play when it's consumed a lot of information and it needs to discuss it with other people, it can vary and it can change and energy is constantly transforming and it depends on your general preferences and your general direction and personality. Before I end this video, I wanna end on a question and a criticism and that's regarding the behavioralist approach of objective personality. The way I see it, objective personality is stronger in the practice of the dichotomies, stronger in connecting to, relating to the base dichotomies and base behaviors, and weaker in describing our intentions, values, and cognitive processes. So we need to talk about that. The dichotomies are interesting. The personality traits, they're a good starting point for anyone who wants to learn about personality psychology, but I feel like their cognitive theories are kind of lacking something. So what can we do to understand these animals in a more cognitive manner rather than focusing on their simple behaviors or mannerisms? So my question for you is, which of the animals do you relate to the most? By the way, if you haven't already, I really recommend you check out my personality test where I discuss the animals and all of objective personalities concepts, including the sexual models, feminine and masculine, and introverted intuitive feeling and all those different personality traits. So check out the test and let me know what you thought about this video in the comments down below.